POC Network here with another unboxing and review on the website. Uh, this is uh, something new. This is the first time we've ever covered anything from uh, the company Russ Sound. And uh, what this is, this is a TV amplifier unit. This is a, it's basically, it's just a ampl sound amplifier for a 2.1 setup that attaches to the back of your TV and or you can, uh, you know, attach it to the wall behind the TV if it's wall mounted or lay it anywhere else if it's uh, sitting on a stand. Uh, we would recommend up behind the TV or on the wall. You can do it. I believe you can, uh, they got the screw holes on the back so it might work with the visa mount on the back of your TV and or you can just use Velcro or something. But um, what this is, it's an amplifier. This is so you can take your smart TVs, your flat screen TVs that don't have much for speakers because they're so flat, so you don't have much space for that sound to resonate around and, and, and get the volume and, the, and the, the depth that you're looking for. So if you don't have a sound bar, you don't have a sound system, but you do have a couple speakers laying around and maybe even a subwoofer, here's a, a solution for you. What this will do, this will put out 35 watts per channel for, to both speakers so you get the stereo left and right, plus it has an RCA out to a powered subwoofer. The subwoofer does have to have its own power, so it um, has to be one that plugs into the wall on its own. But you can do RCA out of this into the subwoofer, um, plus um, two wires coming out of this so it can power this watt, power the two speakers on the sides of the uh, TV. So that way you can get louder and more accurate sound coming from your favorite TV shows and or movies since you can plug your Blu-ray player and everything else into this as well. So what we're gonna do uh, first is we're gonna pop this open, look at what's on the inside, and then you're gonna go to the website at plcnetwork.net forward slash blog and see what our authors have to say about it and uh, see if we like it. Uh, it does offer uh, IR learning, so you can use your TV remote if uh, your remote, uh, if you have a smart remote for, the t you know, for your TV, which most TVs nowadays will have that, uh, thankfully, as long as you put good money into the TV and didn't buy the generic. And uh, I believe that's it. Uh, pretty much, uh, there are Rust Sound speakers as well, too. We should cover that. Rust Sound does offer their own speakers that you can buy for this. Uh, or for any amplifier for that matter, if you want to check them out. We haven't personally listened to any of Rust Sound speakers, so we don't know the quality of the brand just yet. This is our first exposure to Rust Sound, and we can't wait to see what it looks like. We haven't actually opened this yet. We've broken the seal, that's it. But getting to what we're supposed to be getting to, what does it look like and what's inside? So, let's pop this open. First off, you have a, uh, a uh, instruction manual. Uh, for installation, how to set everything up. You have the unit itself. Don't know if it will support the visa mount on the TV because the screw holes are a little bit far apart, but it depends on the TV, of course. Don't need those. Let's see, we have a little box right here. So this is the unit itself right here. And then you have an accessory box. Inside that, you have a power brick. You have a small little remote, so you don't have to use your TV's remote if you don't want to. You have the second half to your power brick. Uh, let's see here, you have an adapter for your cables. And you have an IR learning, uh, an IR, uh, an extended cable for receiving IR commands using that. Uh, the little remote is really simple. It's just uh, mute on and off and volume up and down. Let's take a look and see what the device looks like. Ooh, silicone packs. There you go, justifies the product on its own. Just kidding, I'm weird. Um, here is the amplifier, it's 2.1 channel amplifier, so you have your left to right powered using this, and your uh, subwoofer is uh, has to be powered on its own, plugged into a wall, but you have an output right here that goes to that. You have an audio line input on the top, uh, RCA audio line input. So you have your left, right, your white, and your red cables. Uh, you have a coaxial and optical digital input. Uh, so this is for digital, you know, 5.1 and above uh, source coming in. You're not going to get 5.1 out of this, of course, because it's just going to it's going to um, decode that to 2.1. Uh, but if your TV or device like a Blu-ray player only does optical or you'd prefer to take advantage of, uh, you know, that digital uh, audio, you can input it here and or you can also use multiple devices maybe. Uh, it probably will just uh, play back whatever is being fed to it in general. So whatever's on and making noise at the time, I would assume. You have another connection at the top. This is going to be for the IR uh, cable, which is right here. We'll go ahead and pop that out of the bag. Have a little stick or something so you can stick it to your table or side of the TV or something. So this is the little IR receiver. It plugs right here into the top. 
and then you run it around so it can be it can see it can you know it has a, a bird's eye view or not bird's eye view but a straight shot view of everything else in your living room or whatever space this is installed in uh, so that way it can receive uh, commands from your remote you can say okay um, now, technically, really, even if your remote isn't a smart remote, since it is IR learning, you know, instead of your remote learning it as a smart remote, this will learn it. So, basically, your TV's volume button will work on this. Um, of course, uh, you may not want to do it that way since the TV volume would be going up with this, and you may not want that because your TV volume you're going to want down. Actually, that's not... Well, yeah, sure, I guess, huh? Because it's you're controlling the, vo the volume of the TV is controlling the volume input of this, versus this. I, it might have its own standalone uh, volume as well. So uh, some scenarios when you're using audio output on your TV, um, it's relying on an amplified source such as this and using its own volume instead of the TV's volume. The TV's volume usually will still work on top of that coming out your TV speakers and you generally don't want both of these going because you're going to get a delay between the two and it's going to sound weird, kind of like an echoey room. Uh, and you don't want that. So um, that's user preference uh, in terms of what buttons you want to use. and or if you want to use a smart remote, or if you just want to use the device's remote so you don't even have to worry about it at all. Again, let's pop that out so you can actually see it. It's a real simple flat remote, kind of like a car stereo remote. What you'd find with a Pioneer or something. It's flat, yeah, you got a little thing protecting the battery compartment here, you're gonna have a little cell battery inside. And again, you have your mute, and your volume down, and your volume up. And that's it. So you have your little adapter here, which goes into the back here for your speakers. You have your power brick that uh, comes in two pieces. And you have uh, the IR cable here with the little uh, double-sided sticky tape. So you can uh, secure it to the TV or wall or your, your stand or table or whatever else you want to secure it to. And uh, an instruction manual. And that's it. So this is the Rust Sound TVA 2.1 digital amplifier. Uh, it's Rust Sound is spelled R-U-S-S-O-U-N-D, so you can check them out, Google them, and see what other people are saying. But most importantly, what you want to do is you want to go to our website. It's pocnetwork.net forward slash blog. See what we have to say, because our authors are going to definitely give us a test, and we can't wait to uh, check it out. And we have high hopes, because it's kind of hard to mess up an amplifier. You know, it all depends on your whatever's your weakest link, and of course, usually it's your speaker, especially if you're using... Uh, uh, any kind of analog output, um, or really digital for that output, as long as you have enough power to supply to those speakers, it's up to the speakers to do a good job. And since it's a 35 watt app, it will you can put both speakers or anything else on there, anything that'll go as low as that can be powered with as low as 35 watts, and uh, you're good. So again, plcnetwork.net forward slash blog, see what we have to say, and thank you again for watching. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest, and or at least the gadgets we cover, Remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.